Okay, so what we've now got is just the last little bit, the last considerations um, as we go through the interview. Uh, you're going to find that you need to start thinking about, well, what is your style of questioning and the way that you come across and the way you're approaching the interview. And what that's going to be determined by very often is um, the interviewee as you get there. As I said, there's a lot of uh, things that they assume, a lot of conditions. You know, we talked about it's 40 degree day, it's hot, it's sweaty, it's sunny. Um, they come in and they're very confused. Okay, it's a strange environment, the job interview. So we need to start thinking about, well, what do we want to say to these people? How do we want to approach it? Um, and what, what, you know, where are they at? So if you have a very nervous candidate, okay, for all of the reasons above, you know, it could be a fairly senior panel or whatever it happens to be, um, start thinking about being very explicit and setting the scene. Okay, so what, what happens there is that if they're nervous, um, tell them why they're there, what's happening, what they can expect. Okay, try and build that rapport um, to, to make sure that, um, you know, not only are you relaxed and confident, that they can become relaxed and confident. Okay, have that five minute lead in conversation. Okay, settle them down until they get to a point where that nervousness has calmed down a little bit. Um, you know, as I say, let them know what's going on. Yep, okay, we've got an interview today. We're gonna ask you some questions through the interview. I'll take a few notes. I'll make sure everything's working. Um, I will write stuff down from time to time. Okay, the interview is gonna take about 30 minutes, that sort of gear. So they get a bit of an understanding and then the conversation picks up and you've broken the ice and then you can start to move into actually having a conversation. Um, you can also get the non-talker. Okay, which is once again, um, they either don't really know how to answer it or they're shutting down or, you know, they're just not, okay, it's not really going where it needs to be. So you need to start to encourage the conversation, um, make a special effort to build that rapport above. Once again, the same thing happens. Okay, here, you know, here they're not talking because they're nervous or they're racing stuff or it goes all over the place. Here's where they're just shutting down and really not giving you a whole lot of answers. So start to try and build a conversation, Okay. Um, a lot of the time there, they can, uh, you know, people get very strange. They might have been out of the workforce for a while, particularly. Um, they've got the interview, they're very excited, but, you know, they don't really feel confident in their answers or they're not really sure, you know, what you're asking or, you know, it can be very strange for them, okay? You know, as I say, it's a bizarre environment. So try and find that common language, build rapport with them, um, you know, start to try and find common experiences. Oh, yeah, you've been there. Oh, yeah, me too. You know, you're trying to get some sort of connection with the person. Um, and start um, using open questions to draw out answers, okay? Um, if they're a non-talker and you give closed questions, it's just gonna turn into a yes-no festival and not necessarily get the best thing out of the person. Remember, it's not about whether someone's a great interviewee, you know, it's about whether they're the right candidate for the job, okay? So this person might be a perfectly good person for the job, they're just not necessarily naturally a talker. Now, maybe that's a problem in some jobs where your job is gonna be talk to lots of people, um, but, you know, if, if, it's, if it's a job where they're not going to do that, well, why not just try and spend the extra time? All right, the other thing is you might also occasionally get the hostile person. And hostile people do occur. And, it, you know, they can be angry about a whole bunch of things. Um, you know, th there's a lot of reasons people might come to a job and be angry. You might find that you're within a company trying to place them somewhere else in a company because the job they had is, is, you know, is now closed down or we're closing down a, a site and we need to move them somewhere else. Um, you know, they might have had a bad experience. You know, there's a whole right range of reasons why hostility might come in there um, and, and it creates a bit of a strange and awkward, uh, you know, there's a bit of anger. All right, you've got to start to grip that up because you're the interviewer, so you need to um, so deal with that. Um, if the anger's aimed at you and, you know, you actually have made a mistake or you've done something or, you know, they feel a bit testy, look, just, you know, admit a mistake if you were wrong and, and roll on. Okay, yep, sorry about that, had the wrong answer. Because um, sometimes they can be a little bit confused. Oh, but I thought you already had that information. Yep, I'm oh, sorry. Yep, look, I do have it there. That's cool. Sorry, my apologies. Continue on. Okay, try and stay calm. Okay, the, the, the best way to deal with anger is probably not to have more anger. Okay, because it starts to flare out pretty quickly and the whole thing just turns into an argument and defeats the purpose. Okay, sometimes you're having these conversations for very valid reasons where there will be very valid emotions on the table. Okay, if the, um, if the hostility is not directed at you but at other people, don't get involved, you're not there to take sides. Okay, or point out different perspectives. Um, okay, so your job, not to get involved in that bit. If they're angry about some other department or someone did that, okay, great, got that, noted. Okay, you're not trying to point up, you know, you're not defending people you don't know, you're not defending someone else's opinion. It's not about being defensive, you don't wanna create an argument for yourself as well, you're just taking that information. On the other hand, if it's about misinformation they had, you know, oh, they said our jobs were going to be protected and this, and, 
If they're wrong, you need to start to adjust that and point out very tactfully, um, but you know, correct the misinformation. If they felt it was one thing and it turns out it's another, make sure you correct that. Um, don't challenge honestly held opinions or beliefs. They're just telling you what they understood, okay? And they're a bit upset because they thought it was gonna be one thing um, and then they, they feel that it's something else. Now, whether their feeling was correct or incorrect, they, they, they absolutely feel that way. Um, so there's no point saying, well, no, you were wrong um, and here's the right answer or, well, you're just getting upset over nothing because that's just gonna upset them further. Okay, so you just need to say, well, okay, look, I can understand that's what happened there. Um, this is actually how it needs to play out. This is the correct information. So let's now adjust onto that. Okay, and, you know, as I say, if you challenge it, it'll just turn into a whole, you know, the whole argument and then the anger is with you and then you're dealing with an argument straight away. Um, and lastly, look, if it's not recoverable, conclude the interview as tactfully as possible. Um, and, you know, it, it can come up from time to time. They are legitimately upset. And look, I've seen that. We had a, a takeover in a company I work for. We took over a different company. Um, their staff who had all been enjoying their jobs and everything was, you know, you know it had all gone very nicely till one fine morning. Um, and then there was a lot of misinformation that had gone on. Um, I found that I was interviewing a bunch of different people for trying to find positions for them in their new company. Um, they were angry a little bit you know, and upset because they didn't know if they were gonna have a job. They weren't sure if the interview process is about firing them or, or finding something wrong with them. Um, they weren't really sure what jobs were available. So, so there's a whole lot went in there. Um, and when I sat down with the people, far from being able to have a, a useful interview straight away, what I found was a lot of hostility, upset, anger, that sort of gear that we had to talk through first just to get us to a position that once that was all clarified and that had you know, simmered down, then we could begin the interview. But had we tried to get into the interview before that was dealt with, there was no way we were going to get the, the right answers to the questions and we're just going to be left with a, a huge mess. Um, in the end, it turned out fairly positive and we managed to turn it around. But, you know, there was hostility, there was anger. It wasn't at me. It was anger at the situation. It was anger at them. Um, but, you know, with a bit of calm, bring it down, talk to them, uh, we managed to fix those things up. So this can and will happen in your career. Um, so just imagine the circumstance where it does. The same with dealing with angry customers or the same as dealing with anyone angry. Okay, those tips all apply. All right, so that's just adjusting your style, depending on the interviewee that you have. Uh, the nervous person, the non-talker or non-communicator, and the angry hostile one. Okay, just three to think about. The rest of the time should be pleasant conversations. Good luck with all your recruitment out there. Have fun.